Hello. Um, I would like to like just tell you, wow, I'm so impressed with you, Christian. You truly make like fantasy clothing for everybody. Um, I'm just in love with so many of your pieces. Well, thank you so much. Well, you're so sweet. What I love about us having a chat as well is I feel like your work is the same energy and vibe and kind of frequency as what I do, but just in a completely different medium that I'm also like totally in awe of how you create these like perfect objects. Oh. I'm I'm equally as in awe of your oh, work. Thank so you. thank you so much. I, I, I'm, I'm very flattered being inclusive is a big part of like your brand and even like back a house um you try to make it as diverse as possible uh why is um diversity important to you i mean for me it's vital because i grew up feeling and i mean i'm so lucky i grew up in such a wonderful loving environment you know i have very little issues in my way mm -hmm. i was gay and that was unusual for where i was from but in terms of everything else, I, I had it really easy. But even from my limited experience, like I knew what it was like to never be like considered as part of the thing. Mm -hmm. Like I just want to design beautiful garments for everyone. So I just want everyone to feel part of it. So it's just been at the DNA of the brand since day one. I would love to know like, what was your perspective going into your industry around kind of diversity and uh, inclusion? Because it's a type of art that requires a lot of equipment, it feels like it's a privilege to do it or to be a part of a studio. A kiln is like a couple thousand dollars to like have a place for a kiln. Unlike, you know, painting where you could do it at home in your garage, whatever. I find that like ceramic studios tend to be like sometimes not the most uh, inclusive or, you know, a welcoming environment. My dream was always to just tough it out and try my hardest so that maybe one day I can open my own space and make it more inclusive. I was gonna ask you, where did the uh, name Mudwitch come from? Like, tell me about that. The name comes from just me feeling like it was truly magic being on the wheel, making all sorts of shapes um, that like make people happy. Um, I've had a lot of people pick up my pieces and they're like, ah, oh, it just makes me so happy. And I'm like, great, <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> I think we've got a small amount of time on this earth, as far as we know. We should be here to just, like, make people happy. Mm -hmm. Like, surely that's the best goal. And, like, your work genuinely is, like, a delight upon, like, immediate viewing. Like, you see it and you're like, ah, oh, fabulous. <laughs> like, I love that. Um, same with you, for sure. <laughs> what is your creative process? I always feel like I get asked that question. Um, and for me, I'm just like mumbo jumbo all the time. Things are always going in there. But do you have like a step-by-step -step process that you do when you think of an idea? My creative process is kind of like counter what I was taught in university. I was really taught in university you have to, you know, um, take scans of things and collage them and draw the shape and then you get that line and then you kind of put that onto a fashion figure and you work it out and you've got all these sketchbooks that lead up to the final piece. And that's just like never been how it works for me. Like I create a really boring product if I was to work that way. I always compare it a bit to like how dreams are kind of a mashup of your day. Like often what you've seen or talked about or heard kind of like will appear in your dreams. I always think with my designs, it's a mashup of everything I've seen. And I always want it to be a reflection of pop culture and everything that's going on. So it's things I see on social media. It's sometimes I'll walk past someone who I think looks amazing. And I, I thought I saw them wearing something, but when I actually look, it's not what I thought, but what I thought was way better. So I'm like, that's a great idea. And then I just randomly sketch and, bursts and then it's done. So that's like the best way to describe my process. I want to know about how your Japanese and your Mexican heritage kind of culminated and like does it affect your work in any way? I definitely think that my Mexican side attributes to like the more colorfulness and then my Japanese side attributes to more like minimal shapes. My parents actually met because of pottery. Uh, my dad was a ceramicist. Oh my gosh, ceramics are literally like in your DNA. Yeah, I didn't do ceramics too much with my dad, unfortunately. He um, passed away in 2014 and that's kind of the start of like the whole business was that um, he left a bunch of stuff in his home studio um, and then I just became hooked. I was in the studio like all the time and at the same time I was learning about the body positive movement and um, I think in my head those things kind of mushed together. 
So a lot of the shapes um, have are inspired by body positivity. Like I have like this chubby planter. That's like my favorite one. It's supposed to be like kind of abstract chubby body. And then I have like a Venus shape, which is this one, which is um, inspired by the Venus of Wollendorf. I love that body positivity comes into it and is like reflected in your ceramics because that's also just such another side of diversity, which is so important. And like for my industry is like really one of the biggest offenders in terms of just like making like millions of people feel terrible, like definitely in the past. And so it's like so important that sure in all creatives, but especially in fashion as well, that we like do more to kind of right the wrongs of like the nineties and the two thousands in terms of body positivity. Yeah, totally. How do you reinforce uh, body positivity in your pieces? So it's been something that I've always like cared about strongly because I'm from a Spanish family like it's a family of like curvy women and it's like it's just such a celebrated kind of part of my mother's side of the family's culture. Mm. I've never really understood designers who like shy away from anyone who's kind of like more plus size because not only is it just small minded and like lame but also it kind of like defeats the purpose of what a fashion designer is at the heart of it. Like, at the heart of it, fashion designs are here to dress the human form. And, like, that is not just one thing. Humans, by definition, are many things. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think you really, like, show your might as a designer if you show that you can dress everyone and that you have designs that look great for everyone. That's amazing. (laughs) Chef's kiss. Beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) I agree. I feel like um, just diversity in the art community, period, is such a problem and we're cheating ourselves with so much more like content open-mindedness i just feel like there's so much so many more stories to be told it's so important for like everyone who doesn't fit like like the normative kind mm-hmm. of thing that we've seen in society to see themselves but then it's i always say i think it's like almost more important that the people who do fit that normative kind of like standard see it mm-hmm. because like they're the ones who are like doing a lot of bad things to different people. So like they, they need to see it. And if they see it from a young age, that will affect their minds like in a really deep way. And they, they hopefully won't have those biases growing up. Yeah, totally. So um, Christian, do you have any advice for the next generation? Oh my gosh, I, I, I don't know whether I am certified to give advice, but I can give some from my own experience. Really just hone in on like what makes you, you. Like don't try to be anything else. Just... Like, what are those unique little quirks about yourself? And just lean into them, because that's the thing that people are going to love in your work and people are going to gravitate towards. It, I guess the last one as well would be, like, save your money and get ready to not have a social life because you'll be working all <laughs> Totally. Time. Yeah, leaning in. I feel like leaning into your weirdness. I say weird is a very positive thing because I think it's just... Mm. It's a funky uniqueness. If you have some sort of vision... I think the next generation has such a great platform to just put it out there. Like I sometimes I think without social media, would we even be talking about fat phobia? Would we even be talking mm. about the nuances and intersectionality of like queerness and whatnot uh, and queers in the art world? So like the fact that there's just like this free reign platform is such a gift. And for the next generation, um, I think they should just like, unapologetically just go in and just be be so much be everything lean into your weird should be the title of this chat by the way lean into your weird 100 percent. i hope people get as much from this conversation as i did from chatting to you because like you're amazing and i've i've loved hearing your perspectives and seeing your creativity and like i hope some people get the same vibe and energy because it's I've loved this. I, I could have I could have spoken for hours. <laughs> Me too. Way. Yeah, it's been amazing talking to you. I'm so I'm so like I'm so glad that you're in this industry. That's such a weird compliment, but like that somebody who thinks like you is in this industry because yeah, like you said, the fashion industry has has had some work to do as far as diversity. Oh, well, you're so sweet. You too. I, I I'm and I hope we can meet at some point um, in real life and. I need to get some of your ceramics. Oh, thank you. Uh, like, I, I've loved chatting. Oh yeah, I love chatting with you too.